Well, good morning, Sycamore. Does anybody else feel like excitement in the air, like it's beautiful out? We're getting to worship together. Y'all want to stand with me? Let's sing, let's dance, move around, clap, whatever you got to do.
better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you Turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You give me You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only turn graves into gardens you turn bones into armies you turn seas into highways you're the only one who can you're the only one who can you're the Dear God, we, we just invite you in again, Lord. Um, thank you for this awesome time that we just get to enjoy our time outside together and pronounce that you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Uh, Lord, you're turning bones into armies right here in Georgetown, Father, within Sycamore. God, that is my prayer, that we will be raising up leaders in this community to serve you, Father. confess and bowing here I find my rest and without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need you and Lord I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you With sin runs deep your grace is more where grace is found is where you are and where you are lord i am free and holiness is christ in me lord i need you lord i need you oh i need
Jesus, you're my hope and stay. And teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Beautiful. Before I spoke a word you were singing over me You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me Yes, you did, Jesus You have been so, so kind to me. Let's sing it. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, bites till I'm found, leaves the night tonight. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Come on. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found peace of night tonight. I couldn't hurt it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, 
endless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Let's scream it! Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. the 99 I couldn't hurt it I don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God Thank you for this wonderful time of beautiful worship, honoring you, Lord. Even when our voices crack or we're off beat or we're off tone, Lord, you don't care. It's worship from the heart, Father. Uh, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for no rain. Thank you for sunshine and cool weather, God. I just pray that we'll have open minds and open hearts with what Pastor Dusty is about to share with us, Lord, um, and that we'll just receive your truth. Thank you that I nor anyone else here has to find worth in any other person, thing, or substance out there. It's only through you that we find our true worth, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's good to see you all here today, and we welcome all of you. Those of you who are our guests today, we welcome you. Uh, we've got a basket up here. It's got some cards in it. If you're not on our... Uh, uh, you know, in our software, on our mailing list, our email list, fill out one of those cards, give us your information. Those of you that have changed your information recently, let us know. Baskets here is offering envelopes if you want to make use of those there. Of course, uh, most of you now uh, do your giving online. 
and we encourage you to do that and share that with others. If you're not signed up for Realm, our software, uh, see John. Uh, John will help you get hooked up. We're especially happy today to have a very special person with us today. Mr. Drabeck, would you stand up, please? Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> We're so glad you're here, Mikey, and uh, we thank God for what he's doing in your life, and we're praying the Lord's healing upon you today. Um, to be out here uh, on this beautiful day, a gentle breeze, comfortable to sit out here on this property, uh, a lot of great memories right here but the best is yet to come. As the Lord has led us back here to the hub and all the things that he's doing to just be surrounded by this. And we thank you for your attendance today and we're going to enjoy fellowship time with a meal afterwards. We've been in a series of messages entitled uh, God versus Not God. We've been taking a look at the life of Elijah and, and seeing his experiences and over the last several weeks, uh, we, we've seen where Elijah just waltzed into Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom, and, and announced uh, uh, God's judgment to, uh, to wicked King Ahab. We've seen the stories. God then uh, led him out to the wilderness to be uh, fed by the ravens. And, and then last week, Pastor Dane uh, uh, took us into the story of the, of the widow at Zarephath. Uh, uh, then going back across the country into the land of the Sidonians, the Phoenicians, and his experiences there. So I want to read you the story, part of the story from last week and through the one this week so you can have the larger context of it. So uh, follow me there in, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 17, beginning in verse 8. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. And behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and he said, Please get me a little water in a jar that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said to him, As the Lord your God lives. By the way, she called him by his covenant name, so she knew about him. When she said, Lord, she's using his name Yahweh. As the Lord your God lives, I have no bread, only a handful of flour in a bowl and a little oil in a jar. Behold, I'm gathering a few sticks that I may go in and prepare for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Then Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go, do as you've said, but make me a little bread cake from it first, and bring it out to me, and afterward you may make one for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bowl of flour shall not be exhausted, not in, nor shall the jar of oil be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. And that was going to be a three and a half year, very significant uh, number in Scripture. So she went and she did according to the word of Elijah. Significant, the word of Elijah. And she and, and he and her household ate. For many days, we don't know how long it was, it was quite, quite some time. The bowl of flour was not exhausted, nor did the jar of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Elijah. Now the new part of the story for today. Then it came about, after these things, that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became sick. And his sickness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. What does that mean? That's not a rhetorical question. He's dead. 
That's right. No breath. Uh, uh, Dr. Carey, no breath left in a person. Give us your medical opinion. All right. Thank you very much. There you have it from the expert. So she said to Elijah, what do I have to do with you? Oh, man of God. Can, can you hear a little bit of mocking in, in her voice? You've come to me to bring my iniquity to remembrance and to put my son to death. In other words, you've come to expose my past and all the ways when I, that I've been a failure. He said to her, Elijah did, give me your son. So he took him from her bosom and carried him to the upper room. Now I want you to get in this story all these pictures now, all these pictures that are significant things uh, in, uh, uh, we call them types in, in the Bible. Uh, they're going up to an upper room. Um, the word of the Lord uh, ha ha has come. She's called him man of God. And then he took him from her bosom, carried him up to the upper room where uh, he was living, and laid him out on his own bed. And he called to the Lord and he said, O oh Lord, my God, my God, have you also brought calamity to the widow with whom I am staying by causing her son to die? And then he stretched himself out over the child three times. Is three a significant thing in Scripture? Hmm? Especially when we're talking about somebody dying three times. And she called out to the and he called out to the Lord and he said, Oh my Lord God, I pray you let this child's life return to him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child returned to him, and he revived. What does that mean happened? What do we call that, what just happened? We call it a, a resurrection. It's a miracle. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper room into the house, and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son is alive. Your son is alive. The son is alive. Strike a familiar note. Then the woman said to Elijah, get this now. Now I know that you are a man of God and the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Let's pray. Lord, now we ask you in these moments, you bind the enemy of our soul. He would have no access, no authority in every way that he's tried to bring distractions to this day. We ask you, Lord, to cast those down right now in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts, unveil the scripture. We need to hear from you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God versus not God. Can you see it in the story? The whole setup of the story. The widow, when you think of the widow, she has already, when, uh, you know, Scripture says that uh, the Lord had spoken to her ahead of time and had commanded her concerning Elijah. Now, people hear things from God, that, but that doesn't mean they're willing or acting upon what they hear. When Elijah gets there, the widow has already committed to what? Death. Death. And when you hitch your wagon to not God, guess what the end is? Always. Death. There's life and there's death. A great quote from uh, Shawshank Redemption. Get busy living or dying. 
She had already committed to death. She had lost hope. We see the circumstances were overshadowing her life. Can I get a witness on that in our culture today, in our world today? Can you feel the shadows upon our culture? Can you feel it all around you? The not God forces. We see that in, in her time, political leaders, leaders of nations, had made choices for which the people in those nations were suffering. Does that still happen today? That's why we're always saying we need to pray for everyone that is in, in leadership, whether you agree with them or, or, or disagree with them, you like them or don't like them. The Scripture commands us to pray. Now, I want you to see that for her, though, this woman in the story, the widow at Zarephath, there had to be a death first before there could be life. Her old way of doing business had to change. She couldn't continue looking at God like an a la carte line. The scripture says she had heard God had commanded her before. He had spoken to her. But was she listening? Was she obedient? You know, many of us, especially in the West, we have this idea. You know, uh, the church in America, uh, we, we uh, have, before COVID especially, uh, we made it like an a la carte line where it, it's all about convenience. I want you to know there's nothing convenient in this story that I'm reading to you. Just like for the last however many months in our nation and in the world, there's not been a lot of convenience. But there had to be a death. And in this instance, it's her son that dies. Now, a natural consequence, she had already committed to death early in the story, but now we see that it actually happens and her son dies. The first thing that she then goes and does, she asks the man of God, what have I to do with you, man of God? I want to I ask you, how many times when difficult circumstances have you come before the Lord and and, and maybe you hadn't spoken to him much at all, but when those tough circumstances came, you were, you were shouting and shaking your fist to heaven. You're saying, God, why have you done to this to me? There's not a one of us in here that has never said that before the Lord. We've all, we can all say, we've asked God that question, why? And, and let me say to you, before uh, you think that I'm jumping on all of us with both feet, I'm saying to you today, he is the person you need to go to. Even if it is shouting, even if it is uh, saying those things, because then, you know, Elijah, he, he calls out to the Lord. He says, oh, Lord, my God, have you brought this calamity to the widow with whom I'm staying by causing her son to die? So in a certain sense, Elijah's asking the same question. There had to be a death first. When she shouts out and she says, what have I to do with you? It shows that she has no relationship with God. If anything, all she had was some form of religion. And I want you to know, Tough circumstances erode religion every time. It goes away because it's powerless. Man-made religion. Religion is stuff that man does to get up to God. The God we serve is one who sovereignly, in his grace and mercy, comes to us even though we don't deserve it. 
I want to ask you, did this woman deserve the grace of God? Did she deserve his love? Did, did she deserve his mercy? Did Elijah deserve what God did? Yeah, later on we'll see Elijah uh, stick, his, uh, stick his foot in it because uh, later on we'll see that Elijah is running from wicked Queen Jezebel. Not a perfect man. Not a perfect story. None of us has a perfect story. We need God to intervene in our lives. This religion would stay religion until there is a resurrection. In the story, Elijah then takes the, takes the young man and falls on him three times. And we see that. We see this beautiful picture, this, this foreshadowing of something that would happen. The, the power of God that would be exercised through Jesus the Christ when Jesus would die and go into the grave three days. It had to be. It had to be. Then there was a resurrection. For this woman needed to see a, a resurrection before she could know experientially this God that Elijah was serving. She confesses to him with her mouth at, 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 at the end there. Let, listen to this, this again, the, her statement, the last verse we read. And then the woman said to Elijah, now I know. Hebrew word there for know. It means to know experientially. I know that you are the man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. She had not believed that up to that time. So we see a radical change that comes in her life because of a resurrection of her own son. Now she recognizes that God has indeed done this wonderful thing for her. I want to ask you, as you look at your world today and you... You read the news, you, you take inventory and all the stuff that's happening around us. And every moment that, that goes by, it just seems like more things are, are happening. It, it's, it's like our, our world is just building up speed as we race to the second coming of Jesus. That's the next huge event that is on the calendar for him coming again. And we look forward to that. Look at, look at your life. Look at the thing. The stark difference between God and not God. In this story we read today, God represented by Elijah. God speaking truth to the woman. God taking that young man in his arms. God three times falling upon him. And then finally, God raising him from the dead. Not God. There's a shadow over the land. There's famine. The choices of people have been laid open before heaven that they have rejected God. I want to ask you today, How real is your relationship with Jesus in these days? When darkness comes, guess what happens to every light that is out there? It gets what? Brighter. Darkness 
And when you turn on a light, that light shines brightly. So I ask you the question, the light of your relationship with Jesus, if you just gave as much energy to your relationship with Jesus as you do complaining about the government, arguing with people about political candidates or fill in the blank. But that relationship with Jesus and how he has changed you, let me tell you, <laughs> we could light up Savannah. We could light up this place. And people would see, just like the woman did, see the truth. Second question. How convincing is the evidence of your life right now? Josh McDowell wrote that, that great book uh, a long time ago. In fact, he wrote it back when I was in college. A book entitled... Evidence that demands a verdict. You come to the end of that book and you see all the evidence. Lee Strobel's done the same thing with his case for Christ. An apologetic. Let me tell you, your life is an apologetic. You're either arguing for God, that's God, or against him, not God in the courtroom that is your life. Third question. Last question. How will you change your life? You get to choose. Elijah got to choose. He got to choose when, uh, when the Tishbite, way down here in, in Tishbe, was called to go into Samaria to announce the truth to a king he had never met. A wicked king took his life in his hands. He got to choose when then the, the Lord said, now I want you to go out into the wilderness and, uh, and, and there to be fed by ravens all the time out there. He got to choose when the Lord said, now, now I want you to go completely across the country and, uh, and, and, and to the land of Zarephath and meet this woman that you've never met before. And, and, and by the way, I'm going to speak my truth through you there too. He got to choose. You get to choose. The widow of Zarephath, she got to choose. And she made a bunch of bad decisions along the way. <coughs> but I don't know... I want you to know today that in the end, the last decision, the next decision is the most important one. It's that way for you. I want you to look around you. In the middle of COVID, in the middle of a shutdown of our country, in the middle of a shutdown of the world, Literally, in the middle of that, God paid off this property. God paid off this building. God gave us that modular. Yep. God has done it. He has given us this land. He's given us these buildings. He has, but look around you. He's given us each other. And let me tell you, he's got more people to give us. He brought us to the hub to be a witness. Most of Georgetown does not serve Jesus. But let me tell you, this is just the hub. The spokes are going out. And let me tell you, they're already going out from us. And many, many more. In the middle of what man would describe as discouraging circumstances, God comes in with a resurrection. He raises from the dead. He makes the old new. 
And it's not just a brushed up version. He, he didn't just clean up the woman at Zarephath who was worried about her past. He made her brand new and was, was because of an act of God himself. He's given us each other. He's given us his word, the Bible, that's still the truth. And the world has taken pot shots, this book, and saying it, it's antiquated. And even some in the church are doing that today. And let me tell you, that does not honor God. He's given us his gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying today he'll stir up those gifts in us. But most of all, he has given us himself. When I was a little kid, I'd, I'd get in, in a mess, and I, I wouldn't, something would be broken. I wouldn't know what to do with it. I, and, and, and I'd be stressing over it. My mother would come to me and she'd say, don't worry, Dusty. Your daddy will be home in just a little while. And he'll make it all all right. <laughs> a little ambush here. He's sitting over there today, not leaving the house much, four times in the last six months. But I still see the light of how Jesus resurrected his life. He was a good daddy before he got saved. But man, when Jesus got a hold of him, truly, he could make things right. I don't know how many school projects I'd come home. And I didn't know what to do. And mom again, she'd say, wait till your daddy gets home. He'll help you. Well, let me tell you, I'm saying to you, your daddy, Abba, Father, is calling you to join him in whatever whatever he wants you to do. And he's saying, come to me with everything you have, just like the widow at Zarephath. Suddenly, her past didn't matter anymore because God was working in her present. Dane talked about that last week. Won't you give it all to him? And say, Lord, I, I don't get it. I don't understand all these circumstances. I don't understand what's happening. But Lord, today, I'm asking you to do what I can't do. I was supposed to be a Roman soldier in this play at our elementary school. I insisted that I needed a shield that was curved. I'd cut out the, the wood myself, but I couldn't make it bend. My mom told me again, she said, wait till your daddy gets home. The next morning, there was this perfectly rounded shield painted with a Roman emblem on, on the front of it. Magic had taken place overnight. I still don't know how he did it. You don't have to understand 
all that God's doing in your life. You just need to receive it. Wherever you are, whatever, and how many of you have had a tough week? Put your hand up. How many of you aren't looking forward to the week that's coming? Be honest now. Okay, all right. Do you believe we can get hold of God right now and he can get hold of us? Well, let's pray together, okay? Let's pray. And for all of those who are, who are listening to us, who are joining us with Facebook Live and those that will listen to us later on, we thank you for tuning in. I want you to join in this prayer with us right now. Let's pray. If you have never received Jesus in your life, today is the day. The gospel is for you. The resurrection of the Son of God is for you. Jesus will come into your life and make you a new person. Give your life to him today. It's a simple prayer. It's a prayer of faith. It's more than a prayer. It's opening your life and saying, come, Lord Jesus. We ask you to do this. For those of you that raised your hand here and those who are part of our audience, uh, our digital audience today, we're interceding right now. I'm asking you, Lord, I'm asking you for your power. I'm asking you for the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus, the God of the universe, the one who is Lord over all the circumstances and in the midst of all the things that are going on, Lord. Uh, we're praying. We're praying healing today. Lord, I'm asking you to heal Mike Drayback completely. I'm asking you to come and bring healing to families right now. All those in our area that are suffering uh, with the results of COVID in their lives, God, I'm asking you to heal them. Lord, I'm asking you to heal Donald Trump, President of the United States today, Lord, that you will make him whole and all those that have been affected in our country, Lord. But Lord, more than all that, I'm asking you, for people to turn their lives over to you. And Lord, we do that right now. With the week coming, we're putting this week in your hands. And we're asking you to do what only you can do. Come with your power and strength, Lord. Come, encourage us, Lord. Some of us are downcast today. I'm asking you, Lord, to lift us up. That we can see the truth. We can see the power of God. Lord, I'm praying for, for more time in the Word, more time in worship music, more time in sharing with others what Jesus has done in our lives. Thank you for this body. We bless your name today. And right now, if you want to just receive what the Lord wants to do in your life right now, would you just put your hands up to heaven right now? Just put... Just put them open up. That, that's, the, that, that's the ultimate example of not only of I surrender, Lord, but I receive. <clears throat> I receive what you want to do in my life right now. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. And Lord, today as we have our hands before heaven, we ask you to consecrate this property, these buildings, us as a body, Lord. We are the church, Lord. May we act like it. May we be like it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Lord, for the meal that we'll share in just a little bit, we thank you for your blessing over that too and the fellowship we share together. In Jesus' name, amen. The basket's here if you want to fill out a card, get one of those. We'll let you know in just a moment when we're ready. Uh, and we can spread out and eat out here with a nice picnic together. God bless you.